Hi, it's me, Larry Zapp. Uh, going to do another video blog. This time it's concerning something I read last weekend in one of the local publications that get put out at the racetrack. Uh, it's funny because the the, the uh, writer of this uh, for this publication was talking about something totally uh, different, but somehow he worked the topic of eight bells into his. I don't know, his rational discussion or his logic of why things are the way he says they are. But that is typical of the game of thoroughbred racing. Most of us in the game have a strong opinion. Uh, you could even go further and say we have big egos. But uh, this is what was written and I want to comment on it. Flashback to the 2008 Kentucky Derby and the horrific scene of eight bells going down and having to be put down due to massive ankle injuries. Why bring that up? Because horses hurt themselves and suffer injuries, sometimes catastrophically, through their desire to compete. If a good horse is overmatched, it will try to the end and cause himself more harm than good. Now, the reason I bring that up is because those three sentences indicate that Eight Bells was overmatched in the Kentucky Derby. Now, I just don't understand why one would think that. 20 horses competed in the 2008 Kentucky Derby. Of those 20, I, I don't know how many thousands of owners, trainers, or hundreds of owners, trainers, uh, tried to get in the Kentucky Derby with a three-year-old. It is the most important race in the world because it is the most watched race in the world. People pay attention everywhere to who competes in the Kentucky Derby and obviously who wins the Kentucky Derby. And for eight bells to have beaten 18 males, quite easily for, for that matter, uh, she would have won for fun if Big Brown didn't show up, if he didn't run his race or just beat her. I mean, she was well clear of the third horse. And to say that she extended herself to a point that it broke her down because she was overmatched just, just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, she had a horrific injury, which does happen to athletes, especially equine athletes, when they do give it their all, which they're bred to be, they're bred to be a, a four-legged athlete that gives their all. Some try harder than others, but Eight Bells obviously had a lot of class to her and a lot of desire to compete. Now, Larry Jones, the trainer, won the day before with Proud Spell, the Kentucky Oaks, really didn't want to run one two in that race which i believe he would have he thought by splitting them up he had a chance to make history and win both races and no doubt eight bells ran one of the best kentucky derbies in defeat i personally ever seen now what what happened to her was very tragic but to say that she was overmatched was absolutely ridiculous eight bells should be remembered for the great thoroughbred she was for running second in America's greatest, maybe the world's greatest horse race, and losing to a true three-year-old champion, Big Brown, and easily beating the 18 Colts that, you know, with all the hundreds and thousands of horses that wanted in, those 20 got into the race, and Eight Bells competed at the highest of levels and made her connections proud while she hit the wire second. Now, whatever happened after that was tragic, but don't tell me because she's female that she was overmatched. Just remember, a lot of you who are voting for Curlin, whether it's official or not, believes Zenyatta doesn't deserve it because she did not race against males. So which is it? Philly should never run against males? Philly should run against males? I mean, which one is it? Gold, Goldakova beat males quite easily, uh, not only in the Breeders' Cup mile, but she beat uh, Henry the Navigator in Europe who beat Curlin. So think about that the next time you say Colts and Philly should never be on the racetrack together. Thanks for listening.